Subscribe to Get Curried and click on the bell icon for more updates. Well, today let's make chicken mandi. It's a Yemeni dish. Well, actually, for the uninitiated, this comes from an Arabic word which is nada, which also means moist and dewy. And that's of course to do with the moist and dewy texture of the chicken. Let's begin. Well, an integral part of this recipe is actually the spice mix, which is very typically known as the Arabic spice mix. For that, I'm going to take a few ingredients. Let's first begin with heating a pan and adding in some coriander seeds. Along with this, some cloves, pods of green cardamom, cumin seeds, sticks of cinnamon. While these spices are getting toasted, one very critical and important ingredient in this is actually the flavor of lemon. All you need to do is take the lemon skin or lime skin and add it while roasting. Continue roasting this and then you're good to go. Once this is done and ready, off goes the flame and allow this to cool down completely and the next step is grinding this into a coarse to fine powder. The spices have cooled down and are relatively manageable now. Let's transfer this into a grinder. Well, along with this, two very, very critical ingredients. The first one, of course, is turmeric powder. And along with this, I'm gonna add in saffron powder. Well, saffron powder in the Arabic world is actually a mixture of saffron and yellow food grade color. But nevertheless, you can also choose only to add in saffron because this recipe also has turmeric. Let's have a quick check. And with this, your fine powder is done and ready. Let's move on. The next step is marinating the chicken. And this one is a very unique recipe because one, the style of cooking the chicken is completely different and you'll see it soon. Let's add in a tablespoon full of this Arabic spice blend onto the chicken. And along with this, salt as required. This is more like a dry rub. Mix this well, rub it well onto the piece of chicken. And with this, your chicken is ready to move on to the next step. Well, at this stage, even if you want to drizzle some oil, that's absolutely perfect. Well, that's optional. You can use olive oil, you can use any oil of your choice. I prefer a neutral flavored oil. Let's now move on to the next step, and that is actually cooking the rice. Well, this rice, like I also said, is cooked very differently, and you'll soon see how. But before that, let's begin with oil in the pan. Well, you deliberately need to choose a pan or a vessel that is also oven proof because the next step is moving all of this into the oven. Let's, by that time, slice some onions. The oil has just kind of begun to heat up. Let's slide in the sliced onions. To this, I'm also adding in just a touch of salt so that the caramelization kind of begins and the onions turn golden brown in color quicker and faster. Just when the onions kind of turn to begin golden brown in color, let's move on to the next steps. And that is adding in a few spices and raisins. Let's move on. The first spice that I'm adding in are some green cardamom pods. Along with this, some cloves. To this, let's add in a stick of cinnamon. And along with this, let's bring in that burst of sweetness. And that is golden raisins. Let's give this a mix and allow the raisins to swell up like little balloons and then we'll add in the rice. Well, technically not required, but I'm just getting a little tempted to remove a few brown onions and use that as a garnish later. So let's do that. And it's completely optional. Let's move on to the next step. And that is adding in the washed and soaked rice. To this, let's add in water. And this is actually twice the quantity of the rice. Let's also add in salt as required. Stir this well. And while you're stirring, we also need to add in the spice mix that was made earlier. Well, because of the spice mix, it's going to get a little brownish yellow color. And that's exactly what is required. One final stir. And now here comes the trick of cooking a classic chicken mandi. And that is actually by placing a rack on top of the vessel. And this is the exact reason why initially I had asked you to use an oven-proof vessel. I'm placing the chicken on top of the rack 
The next step is transferring this entire apparatus in the oven and cooking this at 180 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 30 minutes or till the rice and the chicken are both well done. Let's move on to the oven. With this, our chicken mandi is baked and ready. The next step, of course, is to serve this. The next step is to place this gloriously roasted and steamed chicken right on top and garnish this with the fried onions and raisins. And along with that, some pistachios for color. Well, this cooking style may be a little tedious for the ones who've never ventured in the kitchen. But nevertheless, cook the pilaf separately, roast the chicken separately, choice is yours. On that note, do not forget to like and share the video and subscribe to get curried.